Recently, I've been doing a declutter of my wardrobe and I've noticed that there are things that I'm always decluttering and then there are also things that I will just never even consider getting rid of in my wardrobe. So in today's video, I want to share with you some of my style insights and lessons from this declutter and I want to take these with me as I'm moving forward so that the purchases I do make for my wardrobe are more intentional and they ultimately work with my lifestyle and what I genuinely wear every day. I think today's video will be helpful for anyone looking to build an intentional wardrobe. If you're in the building phase of adding pieces to your wardrobe, these are some really great questions to check with yourself before a purchase. And then if your wardrobe is overflowing and you're looking to declutter, these are also really great questions to ask to see what is worthwhile keeping in your wardrobe and what isn't. I wanted to explain that in my declutter, there are usually two types of items. The first type of item comes from being a content creator. Sometimes I would just have duplicates of really great things and I simply don't need to hold on to all of that in my wardrobe. The second category of items are pieces that I probably should have never added to my wardrobe because they don't really work. And this is a section that I'm really focusing on in this video. We'll start off today's video with things that I always declutter and then we'll move into what I will never get rid of. The number one thing that I'm always Always decluttering are multiples of the same item. I decluttered this taupe colored mock neck sweater and this one is made from a really beautiful cashmere material but the reason I found myself never wearing it is that I have something very similar in my wardrobe and when I have two very similar things I will always always have a favorite and tend to reach for that one exclusively and almost never reach for the alternative. With a cashmere crew neck I don't have the problem of it being in the wash. I layer these over t-shirts and I actually try to not wash them as much as possible. And then since I always have one lying around, I will always reach for my favorite. I also find that I generally look better in one style versus another. And then of course, I'll want to repeat that as opposed to wear the alternative. The best thing that I can do here is that anytime I add something to my wardrobe, I like to do a little research, look at some alternative styles, fabrics, and options, and make sure the one that I'm choosing is the best fit for me. The cashmere sweater I've kept here works better for me because it's just a slightly thicker material, so it feels a little bit more comfortable and substantial. I also just really love a simple crew neck above a mock neck or a v-neck or anything else. The fabric and style are always personal decisions that can either make something super versatile or make something just fall a little bit short. I also decluttered these very dark navy trousers. I love this pant. It's very chic, very stylish. The quality is actually great, but I honestly just have another pair that I find myself wearing more. The one I have is elasticated on the waist. It's got a little bit of drape. And then in terms of lifestyle, the tippy one is a little bit more wrinkle resistant compared to the cotton. And I love that I can just grab these trousers and go and they're perfectly smooth. If you find your wardrobe overflowing, Look at your multiples and especially the multiples that don't go into the wash after every wear and make sure that you really need all of them if you have more than one. I'm always trying to balance beautiful aesthetics with practicality and one of the things I find myself always decluttering are clothing pieces that are too thick or too warm for my climate. One of them is this very chunky stripe knit. This one's from Cezanne. I love this knit. It's such a joy every time I wear it. The problem is that I don't wear it very often because there are only a few days out of our year that really calls for a sweater like this. Every time I've been to a colder climate, like driving out for the weekend to ski or on like a winter holiday, I never pack this because it feels a little bit bulky and cumbersome. So even then, I'm not getting that much wear from it. So I think that someone who lives in a slightly colder climate can really enjoy this one a lot more. And this is the kind of piece that that I will try to try to avoid in the future. Something that would be a lot more practical for my wardrobe would be cotton knits. Whether that be lighter weight cotton knits or slightly chunkier cotton knits to get the look of chunkiness but not necessarily to have the same warmth. I also feel like cotton knits are really practical for my climate and I would love to mix up my wool knits with some cotton pieces. Something else that I decluttered that I feel like was not the most practical is this black long sleeve top with a cutout. So it was a wool blend and every time I wanted to go out in this at night, it was either just like way too hot to be wearing this and then in bars, in like crowded places, I also find it quite sweaty. So anything long sleeve like this, is also not the most practical for me. Same thing goes with off the shoulder sweaters. I'm always tempted, but the reason why I've never gotten one is because I really can't see when I want my shoulders out, but 
be in a sweater. So for a night out top or for a cutout top, I would definitely prefer something without sleeves, something in a lighter fabric like this one. And I feel like this style is so much more practical than the black one because it doesn't have the wool in it and it makes all the difference. Something that I find myself always decluttering are clothing pieces that have this combination of fussy and casual. I find that when clothing is slightly fussy and is for evening wear or for event wear, it tends to work okay for me because I'm willing to put in that extra effort. Whereas when it's also combined with casual, that's when I feel like I never wear it and I always declutter it. So I'm thinking about this Arcat t-shirt, it's like a one shoulder piece. It means I have to wear a strapless bra and that alone, I think has just cut how much I wear this by like 90%. It does look nice, but it's ultimately just a t-shirt and I'm not sure it was worth the effort. I also decluttered this red tank top. I mean, beautiful, square neck, really cool back design, but I was honestly never bothered to wear it. I also have lots of tank top and casual alternatives in my wardrobe, like this tank top I'm wearing right now, which I feel like are very pretty, very cute, but they're so easy to wear. And I'll always go for this over the ones I've decluttered. So putting this as a note on my shopping list, do not get something that's fussy and it's casual, because I'm never going to wear it. There are certain styles of pants that are just guaranteed to be decluttered and I've never really been able to figure out what that is, I think until my declutter this time round. I always end up decluttering anything that is mid-rise, low-rise. They are just a no for me. I've had people tell me that they think I look better in mid-rise and I don't really see it. I feel like it doesn't look as good. I decluttered these blue trousers and it's because they were mid-rise so every single time I wore it, I just couldn't help but think these are okay, but I wish they were high rise and I would wear them less and less. I also decluttered these taupe trousers and the reason is because I find them a little bit too lightweight and I've really learned through this pair of trousers that I want my pants to have more substance. I think the reason I like my tibby pants so much is that they have the drape to them. They're a little bit heavier without necessarily being hot and it makes the pant just look so much nicer. I find very thin pants also more likely to crease throughout the day and this is a huge pet peeve of mine because I work at my desk all day long and then I'll duck out and I don't want to be like switching pants in and out of the house so thin pants are easy to crease but also just not the most practical for what I want. If you want more crease resistant trousers, go for trousers made from wool. I find that to be quite crease resistant. You can actually do trousers that are a synthetic blend. I find that this is a good option if you want something very crease resistant and you just don't want to do any ironing. If you're thinking silks and linens that wrinkle very easily, what you're looking for is something that isn't too lightweight, slightly heavier, and it will make it better. It will still crease, but it will be a lot better than lightweight and then also silk linen. So I'm adding to my shop shopping guys, shopping list, don't get mid-rise and don't get very lightweight trousers because they don't work for me. Everything I'm sharing today is personal, but some of them are more universal than others. Something that's incredibly personal to me is that I always end up decluttering anything I have in tan. So specifically a tan leather belt. I bought this a couple of years ago because it was a part of all the fashion guides, like all the models were wearing it. And if you wanted to recreate that look, get the tan belt. So I got the tan belt, which is obviously against a lot of the things I talk about today on my channel. I think tan is one of the the most universal, one of the most flattering, one of the easiest to wear colors in a wardrobe, especially for leather and accessories, but I really haven't found that to be the case for myself. I have pinned it down to the fact that I look better in high contrast because I feel like my hair is quite dark, my skin is quite light, so there's quite a lot of contrast in my features. And every time I wear tan, unless I'm wearing it with black, which I don't really wear, it always creates more low contrast in an outfit. Whereas if I was to wear a black belt, it would be more high contrast. So because of that, I always feel like the tan just gets completely lost in my outfit. I always find that it looks a little bit muddy and not as defined as I want it to. And it's really got to do with my contrast levels. And also the fact that maybe I'm not specifically very drawn to this color. I'm saying this in today's video not to make you avoid tan because there are so many outfits with tan that are just so incredibly beautiful. But simply to show you that sometimes even if it's versatile, even if it's classic, it might not work on us individually for one reason or another. And it's always worthwhile noting this down so we can avoid these purchases in the future. As an alternative to tan, the most obvious is probably black. I wear a lot more black accessories and I also wear a lot of this dark red burgundy color. I find this to be very, very neutral and it tends to go with whatever 
clothes I'm wearing. The deep brown burgundy shade is kind of my tan and my alternative to black in the brownish family. Something else I always find myself decluttering are oversized shirts. I decluttered this blue extremely oversized shirt. This is actually one of those like one size fits all kind of shirts and it was just like too big. Every time I wanted to wear it with a skirt or pants, I would be like tucking for forever. I found that there was really just too much material to be working with and it made it so much more cumbersome than if I was to reach for a shirt that was maybe less long and less boxy. I would prefer something slightly more tailored, more cropped, and it would just make it so much more easy to work with. The exception to this would be cover-ups. If I wanted an oversized shirt to be the absolute most versatile it can be, I would choose an oversized because then you can tie it in different ways, it can be a cover-up, but that's really not a functionality that I was looking for in a shirt. So this one I would skip in those very oversized shapes. Since a lot of you guys are going into spring, summer, I wanted to talk about long Large print. Large print is something I've spoken about before as something that I often declutter. And this time round, I ended up decluttering this paisley print blouse from Isabel Morant. So the reason I even got this was because it was a sale purchase and it was going for such a great deal because it's also 100% silk. But every time I wore this paisley print, I just did not feel my best. It didn't feel like light and youthful. It just felt a bit heavy. But the main reason I would say this isn't working for me is because every time I wear it in an outfit, it kind of looks the same. I really get a lot of joy in my wardrobe from taking an item of clothing and styling it into different outfits, different vibes, and I can't really do that as easily with large scale prints. So what I would opt for instead are like small to medium prints, or prints that are maybe a little bit more subtle, so I can then do some really creative things with it in my wardrobe. And then large prints, everything is kind of decided for you, so I feel like there's less room to play. There are so many exceptions to this rule, but for the way that I style things, I've certainly found this to be the case. So for the final things that I always declutter, I wanted to quickly go through some accessories. One thing I learned about myself this year, this declutter, is just how much I value things being tactile and things being nice to the touch. So I used to have this chain. I think I've had it for about 10 years now. It was like a belcher chain, but it was very lightweight and it was like a little bit rough on some of the edges. It's not very noticeable at all when you're wearing it, but because I play with my jewelry quite a bit, because I fidget with it quite a lot, I would notice every time and I didn't love just like how that felt. So for jewelry, I have an everyday ring and a big part of the reason I like it is not just the aesthetic, but the fact that the band is a bit thicker so it feels really smooth when I'm wearing it. It's little things like that about how things feel that really changes between what stays in my wardrobe and what gets decluttered. Something I decluttered that I wish I didn't buy in the first place is this Oriton belt. It was again an outlet purchase, so it was going for a really good price, but beautiful quality belt. It's in navy. The reason why I got this was because I thought I wear so much navy and I love navy, so it might be nice to have this option. But the truth is I wear so much navy, so I will never ever want a navy belt. And that is something that is so clear to me now, but I wish I had been more intentional when I purchased it to realize. The biggest thing to really take away here is that if I was to put the navy belt next to my black belt, they hang right next to each other. I would basically never choose the navy and always go for the black because I prefer it. This was a really silly purchase and I really don't want to buy things like this again. Let's go to the flip side now and look at things that I will never declutter. When I was going through my wardrobe, these were the pieces where I looked at them and immediately I knew that they were going to stay in my wardrobe and I can see them staying in my wardrobe for a long, long time to come. I'm the first types of items that are here to stay a cropped, well-fitting pieces. So I love when things are marketed as cropped because when I wear it, it's not so cropped. It's almost full length. And what it means is that it just kind of hits me at the place that regular clothes should hit. And it makes these pieces just look like they were made for me, very tailored, very well fitting. And I love these pieces. Some of the things that come to mind are the Cezanne Sammy nail set. You know, the sweater, it's got buttons along the cuff and they sit exactly where they're meant to. Whereas a lot of sweaters, the arms are too long for me, which in a sweater design like this would make it feel quite awkward because the buttons will be bunched up onto my hands. So I love how well this fits and I talk about this too much. Same with the skirt, it's a perfect length. 
Not too short where I feel like it's not as elongating and not too long that I'm drowning in it, it's perfect. This goes for tank tops and t-shirts because I love it when there's less fabric for me to tuck in. This also goes for jackets, I love when they're slightly more cropped and basically everything in my wardrobe. It's actually quite hard to come across things that fit this perfectly so whenever I come across something cropped and fits ideal, I never want to let go of them. One of the pieces and a kind of piece I will never get rid of are unique pieces that are still extremely wearable. And the first thing that comes to mind is this Ghani dress. I purchased this dress like mid last year and it's truly been probably one of my best fashion purchases in years. I love the versatility of being able to layer this over different t-shirts. On a lazy day where I still want to look nice, this is what I throw on over the t-shirt I might have been wearing at home. And it just feels so unique and yet it's so easy to wear that I constantly wear it. This also extends to pieces like the Tibby trousers I've been mentioning. Super wearable but I also think that the shape and design of the bottom is quite unique and when things manage to be unique yet wearable I feel like it strikes some kind of perfect balance. Speaking about unique yet wearable, the two handbags that I feel like I will never ever ever get rid of are my mini and small Loewe puzzle bags. So the reason I will never get rid of this is just because I think that the design is so understated but it feels unique to me. I really love the quality of these bags, they just feel so nice and buttery and they also fit everything I need it to fit for my everyday. And then obviously I've got the small if I want to carry a bit more. I do have quite a lot of bags in my collection but if I were to choose the bag that would probably never leave my collection, I know that it would be these two and I don't need to think too much about it because they're also my most worn and have been for a long time. It comes down to what I was saying earlier, finding those unique pieces are super super wearable is basically how I approach accessories. I also love these alternatives to the Loewe bag because I just think that they feel very special yet they're very understated and these are the kind of accessories that I love to have in my wardrobe. Sometimes basic things just don't feel like they elevate enough and then things that go too crazy sometimes doesn't have the same longevity whereas this is my perfect ideal balance. I never regret adding my staple jewellery pieces made from a solid material. Whether we're talking about silver tones in sterling silver or white gold or whether we're talking about yellow gold which is my preference, anything solid gold I think just can be worn for an entire lifetime and jewellery of course can also be passed on. I'm a big vintage antique jewellery person so I often find things that have been around for 100 years and they're still looking perfect and jewellery really has that longevity beyond anything else I own in my wardrobe. My go-to solid pieces are good chains. I like ones that feel very smooth, have a little bit of weight to them so they feel very sturdy and I especially love ones where you can hang a charm from the clasp. It gives me plenty of options of how I want the necklace to look and I love the versatility. I also love charms, especially vintage charms. So I've been building a little bracelet, it's coming together quite quickly and this is something that I feel like is just going to be incredibly timeless in my collection. I feel like gold hoops are definitely a part of my everyday staples. There's very rarely a day where I'm not wearing them so finding something more solid and sturdy is key. And then of course with rings, rings probably get the most wear and tear because of washing our hands and like working with our hands. So when it's solid it just lasts so much longer and I also love like the way it feels on the hand. Very comfortable, very smooth smooth when something is slightly more hefty. Thank you so much for watching today's video. Ultimately, everything I've shared here today are things I'll be putting on my own shopping guide, are things I don't want to be purchasing in the future. I hope you found something useful in today's video. If you did, I would love you to go hit the like button. Consider subscribing down below. I'm on Instagram sharing tons of reels, tons of style content. If you'd like to join me there. Have a lovely week ahead and I'll see you next one. Bye.